Well, Lee, before we start, I think congratulations are in order for our camera person, the Sunderland fan who was getting married on Friday and um, going on his honeymoon to Hawaii. Very nice. Uh, I mean, which we could afford that. Scotty's Wayne model shirt already packed. Yeah. All, all I can say is good job. Sonnen didn't get to the FA Cup final or he might have been having to cancel his wedding. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, going down to the serious side, um, it was quite dramatic and traumatic at uh, St James's Park after the game with Chelsea. I thought Kevin was um, very emotional, um, brutally honest as usual. You know, the man who wears his heart on his sleeve, I mean, you, you heard me talking to him, and what was it like listening to it, Lee? Well, it's certainly interesting to, to hear that, you know. Um, and it, I just wonder what would happen if we'd have won, if it would have been the same. Yeah, yeah. The same sort of. Um, I think he made his mind up, you know. I think he, I think he made his mind up, because when he walked off the field, when they're all in the centre circle, and he walked off the field on his own, I thought, there's, there's something up here, and. Mm. You know, soon you know we were last to interview, and we soon got the vibes that he was, he, he was, you know, quite open and honest about what what he felt the situation mm. was with money and, and, and new signings and that. Well, I just think it puts a, as a fan, it puts a question mark over when when Kevin first came in and got the job. He said, you know, Mike Astley was asked by Kevin. What do you want to achieve? He said he wanted to win something. You know, going back to the, just stuff what's already been said. Yeah, yeah. And to do that, he he said he needed this amount, and I just I'm just thinking, has something changed? You know, has mm-hmm. been mm-hmm. goalposts been moved? Maybe you know what I mean. But when he was saying about finishing fifth, I, you know, to be fair and to be realistic, I didn't really expect to be in the top four anyway next no, season no. nor the season after because it takes more you know it does take longer than it, whoever's going to challenge this top four who seem to have broke away from everyone else mm-hmm. is going to need more than two years to do it unless there's a dramatic change in mm-hmm. fortune going back to what happened to Leeds a few years ago they were in the top four they tumbled away you know what I mean maybe Chelsea and Liverpool just sort of pushed up and, and took, took place you know but I think it's going to take more than two years I don't yeah. think anyone realistically thought Champions League is going to come no matter even if even if you spend 50, 60, 70 million in the summer <laughs> I still wouldn't expect to, to get there I mean Sven Goran Eriksson was up there at the start of the season but it's it's a long season and well know. someone in the Premier League who, whose job it is to find players said Newcastle needs 60 million spent to get where much the city are mm. and 100 million uh, you know to, to, to get in the top four which is funny you know when you know, I keep harping back to when Kevin was manager the first time. You know, he'd only been here five minutes, and Sir John Hall, when when Newcastle got promotion, Sir John was talking about consolidating in the in the Premier League, and Kevin just said, "There's no such word as consolidation in my vocabulary." And I mentioned to him uh, after the Chelsea game, and he says, "Yeah, it's a, it's a different world now. I mean, the the whole situation has changed, hasn't it?" Well, definitely. I mean. When when you look back to 1993, you know the Premier League was only one year old at that that point, yeah, yeah. and you know the big fear, bef- you know, when Rick Parry, the guy who invented the Premier League, if you like, uh, a lot there was a lot of opposition when that first happened, and I, and I think the Premier League's done a, it's been brilliant for football, but one one thing I w- would say about it was the the fear at the beginning of it was you know the rich clubs would get richer and yeah, the poor yeah, clubs yeah, get yeah. poorer. When you look at all the, the teams at the bottom end of the sort of 92 sort of league clubs, if you like, a lot of them have sort of like gone into administration. And whereas the likes of Man United, Chelsea, Liverpool have all done, done exactly the same and got richer. And I think Newcastle are they are up there, but the the benefit and sort of yeah. slowly from it. I, I think the thing is, top four's a long a, way away. I think the thing, I think the thing is that there's a lot of teams got as much money as Newcastle now, like Portsmouth and, and Manchester City and. You know, whereas Kevin was able to attack, attract players like Espriller and Shearer, and you know, and, and, and even after that, when Newcastle got Mike alone, uh, you know, you just worry that those days are over. Mm-hmm. But I mean, you know, Kevin's put the ball very much in Mike Ashley's court. Um, you know, I just feel that if, if for any reason Kevin Keegan is not manager of this football club to start next season, there'll be a lot of disappointed Newcastle United fans. Well, I think there will be, and uh, I, I think I still. Th- I'm still convinced that Kevin King's probably the only man who could take Newcastle back to the promised land. I don't think anybody understands the job as well as he does, you know. I mean, obviously, other names get bandied about, but we've had all the same before, you know, just different faces. It'll come in with the same attitude, you know. 
I think I've heard you say on a lot of occasions you couldn't get any bigger names than who've been in charge in Newcastle. You know what I mean? But I think Keegan's the only one who's who's delivered, and uh, I think Newcastle have to stick with him, and I, and, I, and I think they're going to have to back him. They're going to have to give him the give him the money what he needs, yeah. and see this three year contract out and see where Newcastle are at the end of that. Yeah. I think we all know Kevin's honest enough. If if at the end of that three years, haven't been heavily back. Newcastle aren't in the position where we want to be. Then you know I think he would put his hands up. You know I honestly do. Yeah. I think the, I think the only thing that certainly at the moment is that Newcastle United fans are one hundred percent Kevin Keegan. To be fair, as we are, you know, mm-hmm. it would be it would be a sad day for for, for journalists of Kevin Keegan left because he's absolutely brilliant to deal with. He, he's open and honest, and uh, he did turn me off last week for one of your ideas. <laughs> Thought you'd get that one, eh? Yeah. Um, Still had your name on it, all. Yeah. Well, you know, I think, I think the last words to Kevin last night was, you know, what are your plans? And he just says, uh, I just want to go on holiday. So I think it's going to be a very interesting summer. And let's let's hope it's it's a good one for Newcastle United fans. But, you know, before that, of course, Newcastle go to Everton. uh, And the, the bottom line is, if they don't, if they if they are beaten at Everton, they will equal they will have forty three points, which is the worst in, in, in the Premier League history, and that's that's something for you know people at the top of Newcastle United to think about. I'm not really anticipating a, a huge game at, at Everton. It's no. probably bigger for them. And uh, yeah, yeah. If Newcastle win, great. But well, I just think it's deck chairs, holiday brochures kind yeah. of game, isn't well, it? Well, if they don't, if if the, if. If they don't avoid defeat, then they have equaled the worst ever record in the Premier League.